Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I want to talk to you about a couple of subjects today. Number one is Gaza, the latest updates from the ground. What Mustafa al barghouthi who is the leader of the Palestinian initiative movement, political movement, has said regarding the Russian negotiations between the Russian authorities and the Palestinian political movements. A recent uh, statement from one of the family members of uh, an Israeli who is kidnapped and still in Gaza, and uh, the latest uh, shock resignations from the office of the Israeli spokesperson, Daniel Hagari, alongside a couple of other things, of course, as usual. With regards to Mustafa al-Barghouthi, obviously we've had the negotiations in Russia with all of the Palestinian political parties and the Russian authorities. Apparently, this is done to try and achieve some sort of a political agreement between the Palestinian political parties. We spoke about how Russia is keeping it very secretive. They're not declaring very much about those meetings. The only official statement we've had was uh, from the Palestinian um, movements, obviously. Now we had a new statement from Mustafa El barghouthi He said that in an interview recently that, to be honest, I didn't expect uh, the, this positive outcome from uh, this consultation. I thought I thought it's going to be like just an exchange of you and a, and a consultation, but it ended up to be quite substantial. There was a realization from the first day from everyone. He said that there is a grave danger from Israel against all of the Palestinian political movements, not just Hamas. We had a positive vibe and we agreed on a position that the main success of uh, the Palestinian movements and the Palestinian people is to prevent Israel from isolating any political movement. This is in reference most likely to Hamas. They're trying to isolate Hamas and the Palestinian resistance. They have a clear agreement not to isolate any uh, Palestinian uh, political group. He said, I'm glad that it went ahead despite massive pressure from Israel to prevent political figures from attending and putting pressure on them uh, to make it fail as much as possible. And that he said that the main thing is that we're agreeing to stick together in the meantime. Obviously, they're going to have further declarations later on. And we agreed not to isolate any political movement. And we're moving on together. Obviously, it's still just talk. Look, we've seen positive vibes previously, not to be pessimistic here. <laughs> but we've seen positive vibes from uh, many meetings for reconciliation with the Palestinian movements that haven't resulted to anything really. But so far, it looks so good. We'll obviously see how things uh, evolve. We don't want to, you know, have any negative uh, uh, inputs when something is in the process. And we'll obviously see depending on the outcome. The second thing that I want to talk about is Gaza. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Gaza has been intensifying day by day. And it's all across. I mean, today in al Burej refugee camp, this is an area that's been like a curse on Israel. al Burej, they have tried to enter al Burej so many times but they haven't been able to, barely on the outskirts of uh, al Burej refugee camp. And today, uh, Saraya Al-Quds, the armed wing of the PIJ, they took down a UAV, a big UAV with a SAM-7 uh, shoulder-held uh, missile, and they took down a quadcopter with simply a shot. Then we had Kata'ib uh, Al-Qassam, Al-Qassam Brigades, the armed wing of uh, Hamas, they took down three Israeli uh, tanks with Yassin 105 completely destroyed them. That's what was just recorded, by the way. I'm not talking about the battles all across. Uh, in general, we've had battles in Khan Yunis area near the Gaza, uh, Al Burej, uh, a couple of other parts as well from both uh, Al Qassam, uh, Al Saray Al Quds, and other Palestinian resistance movements, also Hamas. The uh, Al Qassam brigades they also targeted multiple soldier gatherings with uh, mortar shellings. And this, uh, just to highlight really here, this Yassin 105 uh, RPG that's produced and manufactured by Hamas, 
It's been the most effective weapon against Israel in this whole war. They took down over 1,100 Israeli tanks, bulldozers, troops carriers. With this, yeah, seen 105, it's a double warhead uh, RPG. And it's, it's so effective. It, it invades the tanks, explodes from within, doesn't leave anything and they've been annihilating uh, Israel with it but it's important to highlight that they produced it so they still manufacture them They're, they don't rely externally on these weapons they're self-sufficient uh, when it comes to this another thing that I want to talk about is the families of the Israelis who were kidnapped by uh, Hamas they're obviously fuming. They've been protesting and they regularly have meetings with Israeli officials, including in the Israeli Knesset, which is the Israeli parliament. In a latest uh, interview or a meeting that they had, uh, one of the brothers of those who were kidnapped in Gaza, he started uh, saying that I'm going to kill myself. I'm, I'm threatening to kill myself if you don't uh, bring him back. These people have had enough Israel. And to them, it's, it's not Hamas they're upset about. It's their government because they're not agreeing to a deal. They clearly see that is a, there is a prospect for a deal. We had a temporary ceasefire. We stopped the war for a bit. We had a, a temporary ceasefire. And people were released. We could have continued that instead of continuing with this um, failed campaign, well, just a genocide campaign, but militarily, from a military perspective, achieving the objectives uh, perspective. This is how you judge a war, whether you achieve the objectives or not. Israel is clearly doing nothing. And these people are fuming because their family members have been in Gaza for over five months now. And we have had another report today. Uh, Hamas released an audio clip of Israelis screaming before Israel bombed them in Gaza and the father uh, of one of those who were killed was also fuming at the Israeli army for killing his son in Gaza. We've had over 80 Israelis killed in Gaza due to Israeli bombing and this is most likely deliberate for Israel to get rid of as many prisoners as possible, although we had a statement from Al-Qassam just a couple of days ago that I spoke about. They sent a message to Israel because Israel is obviously thinking that the more of our hostages we kill, the lesser the price we have to pay. They told them if we have one, we'll ask for everyone for this one person. That's it. Here's the deal for you. Right. But that's the thing you need to understand here. This is coming concurrently with more pressure to intensify the war. So you have the people who want to end the war, the prison, the uh, families of the prisoners in Gaza. But at the same time, you have people who want to intensify the war. Who are these people? Ben Gvir and Smotrich, Netanyahu's main allies in the government that is that are keeping the government afloat, really, of Israel. Both of them called to intensify the war. This is what they're calling for. End the negotiation, intensify the war, Keep going. It's, it's as if they're delusional, these people, and don't know what the hell is going on. Your prime minister is telling you we're in urgent need of 7,500 soldiers, unwillingness to, to fight, people fleeing. But it seems like when you reach a level of um, racism and arrogance, you become completely delusional with your ideas and thoughts, really, and completely detached from reality. I mean, I spoke previously many times about uh, previous leaders in the military intelligence industries, establishments in Israel, warning, really. I mean, the Mossad had, the previous Mossad, had, Tamir Prado, he said, if we continue down this path, we're doomed. And it's not any person. The previous head of the Mossad, they know stuff. They know a thing or two, <laughs> to say the least, about Israel. And the final thing that I want to talk to you about in this video is that we had mass resignations in the office of the sp spokesperson of the IDF, Daniel Hagari. Not him himself. Some reports said him himself, but these were wrong. It's mass resignations in his office. They included a couple of main names, really. Uh, Colonel Butbul, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Richard Hecht, and uh, he was the spokesperson for the foreign media affairs in the IDF. Lieutenant Colonel 
Merav Granot Stolier and Lieutenant Colonel Tsupia Moshkovich. So all of them left apparently because they don't like the political links that the spokesperson has outside of his role. Obviously, the IDF, they need to be as, uh, you know, non-biased as possible, really, not affiliated, but with all of this political affiliation and political division when it comes to Israel, it's as if everyone is now becoming more politically aligned, even if they are the IDF chief. Netanyahu knows who he is aligned with, and this is something, again, Obviously, previously in the past, you've had people who you know where they were leaning towards, more left or right, although we have our uh, argument here about the left in Israel. But usually these positions, they indeed were establishment positions. They weren't like politically affiliated. They're above politics when it comes to the army and the Mossad. But what's happening now, we reiterate, again, is unprecedented when it comes to the level of division and involvement of politics in the army and the division in the army. And they, these things were never there in Israel. No wonder people are saying this is the end of our state and we're living the worst time in our history. In the live stream tonight, I will be talking about the two ground invasions uh, four special Israeli units to Lebanon, what happened, uh, how Hezbollah responded, and what that means. So join me at 9.30 for my live stream, and I'll see you soon in the next video. Take care.